Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news as emergency crews are responding to the scene of a structure fire at 108 C Street in West Fargo. Officials say the fire appears to be in a garage attached to a house. Valley News Team's Katie Opperly is on the scene with the very latest. Katie. Andrea, I am currently in West Fargo off the of First Avenue East and C Street. We're told that around four o'clock, officials arrived on scene to find a garage on fire. Then they determined that a man was inside this garage. That was when they made the decision for the safety of that individual to go inside and remove him from the garage. We're told that that individual was then taken to the hospital by ambulance. Officers also were checked out for smoke inhalation. We're told that investigators will remain on scene to continue to monitor this situation. We'll bring you updates as they become available. For now, reporting live in West Fargo, Katie Opperly, Valley News Live. All right, Katie, thanks so much for that update. President Donald Trump is speaking now from the White House. Let's listen in for a few minutes. If you go back, look during the FDR New Deal days, there was something that if you time value it, you could say it was bigger. I don't know. But this is certainly in terms of dollars by far and away the biggest ever, ever done. And that's a tremendous thing because a lot of this money goes to jobs, jobs, jobs and families, families, families. The Senate bill, as you know, includes $350 billion in job retention loans for small businesses with loan forgiveness available for businesses that continue paying their workers. They continue paying their workers. That's what we want. We want them to keep their workers and pay their workers. This will help businesses keep workers in the payroll and allow our economy to quickly accelerate as soon as we defeat the virus. $300 billion in direct cash payments will be available for every American citizen earning less than $99,000 per year. That would be $3,400 very quickly for the typical. All right, you can continue listening to President Trump's news conference regarding uh, a coronavirus update on our webpage, valleynewslive.com, and on our Facebook page. Meanwhile, Governor Doug Burgum announces nine new cases of COVID-19 in the state of North Dakota. Governor Burgum says that brings the total of positive cases in the state to 45. The governor also spoke about the situation globally as the cases continue to climb. Coronavirus, a uh, global pandemic, continues to accelerate even in uh, countries that we would consider to have healthcare capabilities similar to the United States. Uh, we've talked about Italy at past conferences, but I want to mention Spain. Uh, Spain is now uh, in a position where it's likely going to pass. Italy is having the second most number of coronavirus cases, and this is in a country. So far, over 1,900 North Dakotans have been tested for COVID-19. Four people are currently out of isolation. Again, state health officials have confirmed 45 positive cases in North Dakota. And currently, there are eight people who are now hospitalized. For more information on schools and closings and a full list of online services for North Dakota residents, you can head over to our VNL News app. Meanwhile, Minnesota Governor Tim Walz has issued a two-week stay-at-home order to slow the spread of COVID-19 and protect the health care system. Governor Walz's executive order will limit movement outside homes beyond essential needs beginning in March. Uh, that's March 27th at 1159 until March April, or rather until April 10th. The closure of bars and restaurants will extend until May 1st. The Commissioner of Education is implementing a distance learning period for Minnesota students that begins March 30th and runs through May 4th. This comes after Minnesota state health officials announced that the number of positive COVID-19 cases in the state has risen to 287. Over 10,000 people have been tested. Officials say a total of 26 people have been hospitalized due to COVID-19, and the first death happened last Thursday. Good to know these gray skies won't last forever, but the cold, well, we have to make it through another night of cold temps. Let's go to the First Alert Storm Team Center and Hutch for more on tonight's forecast. Hutch. 
Thanks so much, Andrea. As we head into the evening on this Wednesday, we are seeing cloudy skies and a few of us seeing a few flakes of snow. It's coolest here in the Red River Valley. We have mid 20s, Grand Forks and Fargo. Elsewhere, we're closer to 30 to 35 degrees out to the far east. We have showers, heavy rain south of the Twin Cities and bands of moderate to heavy snow between the St. Cloud area and the Twin Cities. And this batch of light snow moving along the South Dakota border will continue to trek eastward. Cannot rule out a flake here in Fargo and Point south this evening into the early overnight hours. Mid 20s will be the rule here and likewise up in Grand Forks will slip down into the low 20s by bedtime tonight. We do have warmer weather now. We have gotten over the hump on this hump day. Let me tell you how warm things get as we look at your forecast here in just a couple of minutes. All right. Thanks, Hutch. Bemidji police are now asking the community to, to check their property for a 35-year-old man who's been missing since December. Officials say Matthew Asa is believed to have been walking in the downtown area the evening he disappeared. Police are asking the Bemidji community to check their property, their stored vehicles, fish houses, boats and campers for signs of Asa. Police say if you have any information on his whereabouts to call the number on your screen. Police are also asking for the public's help finding an individual who stabbed a man several times during a robbery in Grand Forks. Grand Forks officers were called to the 800 block of 51st Street North just before 9 last night and found the 29-year-old victim who had been stabbed several times in the thigh. He told police he was attacked while walking to his parents' home. The suspect, who took off, is described as a tall man with a medium build who was wearing dark clothing. The victim is being treated for wounds but is expected to be okay. Authorities in South Dakota are looking for five inmates who walked away from a work center where another inmate tested positive for COVID-19. The South Dakota Department of Corrections says eight women in total walked away from the minimum security work center in Pierre on Monday. Since then, three have been found. Five are still on the run. There's no word yet on whether any of the escaped inmates were showing symptoms of coronavirus. Police say a thief in Bemidji is driving around in an unusual vehicle uh, after a tow truck was stolen in the city. Officials say this red tow truck was stolen sometime yesterday morning. It's a 2007 International 4000 series with Minnesota plates YBC 3496. If you see this truck, go ahead and call police. Two Minnesota women had a dream vacation plan for Las Vegas, which came to a screeching halt because of the coronavirus pandemic. At first, their airline refused to budge on offering them plane tickets that they could use next year. So they contacted our whistleblower hotline and Valley News team's Joshua Pagero was able to get them results. Christy Knoll and her sister say they booked the trip to Las Vegas. Their plans were to go to a five-day event dedicated to rockabilly music. And my friends were friending me and said, oh, you gotta go to this event. They spent a year saving up and booking hotels and flights. But then the coronavirus pandemic took hold and things quickly changed. We had no control over this. You know, this is just something that, that just happened. And we're upset, needless to say, because we have spent money and time in an itinerary provided to us by the sisters, it shows their flights departing April 8th from Hector International Airport in Fargo. They were flying with Allegiant Airlines. This week, the airline announced it would be significantly reducing its flight schedule. Noel says she was upset the voucher she received for canceling had to be used by February of 2021 as opposed to April of 2021 when the events would happen. This is really not okay and um, we deserve better. No, they're going to get bailed out from what we understand. So help us out. But soon after I contacted Allegiant Airlines, they reversed course and said they would honor the tickets for next April. In an email, a spokeswoman says due to the extraordinary times, they will be flexible. Good news to know. I did make the phone call and couldn't get any results. And just like that, you got results. Thank you. She says they're already planning for next year's event. In Fargo, Joshua Pagero, Valley News Live. Allegiant Airlines says all Chrissy Knoll has to do to get her voucher extended is call customer care. They say typically an expiration date is based on the flight's booking date. If you need help with an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth.
The coronavirus has impacted many people's lives, but one thing it hasn't changed is the love in the community. People in, in the valley are spreading hope by displaying hearts in their windows. More hearts are showing up around the nation, and people are encouraging you to join in as we get through this tough time. Everywhere we've been, me and my daughter, we actually went for a walk last night. We found 23 houses with hearts on them. Wow. So it was pretty, pretty nice and kind of a motivator to get her out of the house. To see more pictures of hearts around the metro, go to our Valley News Live app. And the coronavirus uh, strikes close to home, literally, for an NBA all-star. Carl Anthony Towns of the Minnesota Timberwolves says his mother has been hospitalized for the past week and is dealing with health complications from what he believes to be COVID-19. Towns said his mother is now in a medically induced coma. Uh, she just wasn't getting better. Her fever was never cutting from 103, maybe go down to 101.9 with, with the meds and then immediately spiked back up during the night. She was uh, very uncomfortable. Uh, her lungs were getting worse. Her cough was getting worse. Towns released the emotional video last night on YouTube. Still ahead tonight, the White House and Senate leaders strike a major deal to give the economy a two trillion dollar jolt. We have cool temperatures here in the valley with 20s in Fargo. It's 60 degrees warmer in San Antonio. We're warming up here as we head toward the weekend. Your hour-by-hour -hour forecast is straight ahead.